Lord Frank. Thanks for coming, bro. Thanks for having me, man. So why don't you give a little intro about yourself, kind of where you're from, All right. who you are, and then we'll jump right into it, man. I'm Franklin, Franklin Kuros. Um, I'm originally from Virginia. That's where I lived at in the States, but spent most of my life in Panama. Really? Yeah. And um, joined the military out of Virginia. Okay. I got myself in a little bit of trouble. What yeah. kind of trouble? I was, um, I don't really like <clears throat> have parents, I guess. Yeah. So in Virginia, there was a lot of the stuff where we lived at, it was just a lot of bad shit going on. Okay. And I, I didn't want to get myself involved in it, but I ended up getting myself involved and I got arrested. I think when I was just turning 18, Ugh. And I got sentenced to 15 <clears throat> years. Shut up. You yeah. got 15 years at 18? Yeah. What did you do? I have possession, possession of a uh, concealed weapon, resisting okay. arrest, and then possession of marijuana with intent to distribute. How much weed? I had like fucking, I think like four grams on me, dude. That's it? It was Virginia. It was 1988. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's a five-year charge for each thing. So, <laughs> yeah. And so I, um, I had a little like stash of money and I had got a lawyer and he found out that they hadn't read me my Miranda rights at the right time. So everybody who gave a this, loophole. Yeah. Everybody who had read me my, who, who had written a statement about me, they just didn't put the Miranda rights in the right spot. And then he ended up getting my sentence suspended. So I did like maybe like five or seven days getting processed and stuff. And then I got no kidding. Yeah. I got sentenced to six months probation, six months anger management and six months substance abuse. And then I had to pay like three grand in freaking fines. Yeah, which is a lot back then. Yeah, and 900 hours of community service. 900 hours? What'd you do yeah. for your community service? I just ended up paying it. <laughs> I, I minimum wage, dog. They, they had me going to a, a homeless shelter, man, and cleaning up the, it was like a old ass like motel. Uh -huh. So I had to go into each room and clean them after these dudes had left and I just couldn't do it. You'd rather just pay it off, huh? Yeah, so I just saved Damn. some money, and at the at the very end, I freaking paid it off and shit. And um, but even then, like my PO, he wouldn't sign off on my stuff unless I was like progressing. So progress was having a job, but then also pursuing something else, like your education, okay, you know, or pursuing the military. So I was trying to pursue my education, but since I hadn't finished high school, I think like ninth grade was my last grade in high school. Okay, so um, <clears throat> I got my GED. And then I tried every branch of service, man. And then I, I had never heard of the Marines. I didn't even know what the fucking Marines were, dog. Really? Yeah, and I stepped out of the Marines airport. Will take you. Yeah, I stepped out of the recruiter, the recruiter's office, and this fool was smoking a cigarette. Is the only recruiting station that had like a little butt can or whatever. Yeah. And this fool was like staring at me, smoking. I was depressed, man. I was like, I'm, I'm never gonna figure my life out, you know. And he just goes back inside, and I walked in, and I was like, Yo, are you? Is this the military? Like, what, what is this? <laughs> I was like, what is this? Are you guys one of them? And they're, I was like, I need, this is my last straw. I need to join the military. And they busted out these little cards. And I was like, look, man. Skip the shit. I don't care, dog. I was like, I'll be, I'll do anything. I'll sweep clean. Just get me the fuck out of here. <laughs> and that shit within itself was a fucking journey, yo. Those, those my recruiters, man, fucking bless them. Let's I love them. Let's hear it, dude. This is why we're here, man. I love you, dude. Already, this is going to be great. So... I didn't finish school when I got arrested in the States, but I was going to DOD schools in Panama because okay. my dad was in the Army. Oh. He has a Vietnam vet, and he was oh. in the Army and he was stationed in Panama. Dude, how did he take you getting arrested? Oh, my dad was pissed. <laughs> uh, he was fucking pissed off. You grew off. up as a Vietnam dad? Yeah, but he, oh. yo, but my dad, on, on his, like, my dad was a fucking hustler. My okay. dad, like, he, I mean, it's just it's a whole other story, but my dad did his time in Vietnam. He got out of the army and started freaking making phosphorus bombs in Panama f against the local regime, like the local like political government shit. My dad was like working for them or against, against them? them, and he was making phosphorus bombs for them. He got himself in too much trouble and came back to the states and joined the army again and became a map maker. So my dad was, my dad was something else, dog. Can we get your dad on the podcast if he comes back to the states. Yeah, he's oh, scared. Yeah. He, he he got he got in trouble for laundering money in Panama and shit. And he's scared <laughs> to come back to the states. <laughs> It's, I don't know, man. We'll go to him. Chris, we're going to him. <laughs> you got go, go to him. You got to go to Panama and talk to my pops. He, he has some crazy ass fucking stories. Yeah, but where, where were you? How did I get on oh, my dad? Damn, dude. Already. We're just. <laughs> All right. Um, oh, yeah. Ninth grade. Yeah, ninth, ninth grade. grade yeah, ninth yeah. grade. So I didn't finish ninth grade. In order to join the Marine Corps, you got to finish. You got to at least have GED in 10th grade mm. completion. And, and they call me and they're like, bro, we can't get you in. <clears throat> and I was like, but what about the schools in Panama? It was block scheduling. And for a while, 
um, for it was a the first half of the school year was um, I think it was 10 and then the second half was 11. So I finished the first half and then my dad kicked me out and I was fucking homeless in Panama. No shit. Yeah, and I didn't at do what that age? At 16, 17. Your dad kicked you out at 16? Yeah. He, he in was, Panama? Yeah. What's Panama like? It's nice if okay. you got money and then I mean if you're just living out in the fucking yeah. streets it All fucking right. sucks. I got myself in a shit it, I got myself in a shit ton of trouble and I ended up having to come back to the states for all the trouble I got myself in Panama. And um yeah, that shit was that's just something else, but at least I had <laughs> finished. I had I had that on paper somewhere. I told him I was like, "Hey, I was like I, I went to school in in freaking Panama and it's a DOD school." And they're like, "All right, cool. Let me see what we can find." But the bases had closed down already. Oh no. They ended up finding some photocopy of like my report card and the other half was faded out. And the first half showed that I had that I had finished the first block mm-hmm. scheduling, but I just never started up on the other shit, you know what I mean? So they used that and they put a government stamp on it, and that's how they freaking got that out of the way. Really? And then uh, they waived my arrests, and then there was a couple of other ones that just said, don't say anything. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I fucking didn't, and I joined the Marine Corps, you know what I mean? Like, they're like, in that moment of truth, they're like, do not say shit. shit. And yep. I just sat there, and I was like. Oh, during the amnesty period at boot camp? Is that what yeah. you're talking about? Dude, my recruiter did it. So my recruiter whited out some shit. I was and fucking drenched in sweat, dog. Because <laughs> he told me, he goes, he goes, no matter what you say, what they're going to say, he goes, they don't know or you wouldn't be that far. He goes, keep your mouth shut. Yeah. And he's like, you'll see people raise their hands. Oh, have you ever done drugs? This, this is your amnesty period. Now is the last time. We know. We, and it, I was sick, dude. I'm sitting there like, cause he, I had asthma, I, had, I tore my, uh, my meniscus mm-hmm. and dude, he whited all that out of my medical records. And he's like, listen to me. You want to be a Marine, shut your fucking mouth. Don't say shit. Sit through that class. It's going to be like you're in doctor when you get yeah. there. And he's like, they're going to say everything they can to scare you. That's Dude, I went through and the two kids raised their hands. Never saw them again. Yep. Like three, like they start, the door was on the right and they start yeah. lining up and I'm just like, yep. <laughs> Just sitting there like sweat, no stretched. eye contact with any of them. Yep. I'm like, man, I'm like, fuck it. If you guys take me, you guys take me. Whatever was the worst case scenario. You're hilarious. So yeah, I get past. And to be honest, like I said, I didn't know what the fuck to expect. I had no idea. I thought that like I was gonna show up and be kind of like camping. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like some fucking like I was gonna get some zero knowledge of the Marine Corps. Zero. And you just joined. I just joined, and my brother <laughs> told me he's like, you just need to start running. So I was just always running and doing pull-ups. Okay. So at least I went in being able to run and do twenty pull-ups, and that was it. Good, yeah. Yeah, and fucking so we get in there, and you know, at the very beginning, everything is like nice, you know, <laughs> like where you're waiting to get your drone. So you're like, man, this shit is dope. Are you a Paris Island Marine? Yeah. Okay, cool. And then that that whole ceremony when they turn the drone instructors over, like they're yeah, yours yeah. or whatever. I was like what the fuck is going on in my life right now? And I went in during a time when there was only like fucking 25 of us. In what this year platoon. is this? This was 2000. Okay, so you're pre-war. So yeah. That's how small your platoons were? Yeah, it was tiny, dog, because it was, it, was, it was before all the kids yeah. graduated. And it was like in between seasons, I guess what they called it or some shit. Yeah, yeah. And there's like four drill instructors and then two of them that were there were under investigation for like hitting some kid in the back of the head with a canteen and fucking his ass up. And so they put him with us, dog. And I was like, I was, these fools were putting their hands on me, man. I, and I, my, my, my recruiter said, no matter what happens, it's going to be worth it in three months. Just put up with it. They're not going to put you through anything worse. I thought these fools were not human. I, I'm from Panama. Y'all, I'm Hispanic. I'm superstitious. I, I, I believe They're in cursed. weird shit. They're cursed. I was sure. like, dog, these fools, how can they do that? How do they know I'm touching my face? How the fuck do they know... How the fuck do they know if I'm opening my eyes? Like, what is it? You know. So they had that shit was a whole another experience for itself. And I, I went when I went in. I guess I got a pretty decent um, ASVAB score, but oh. I, but they still put me as infantry. Of course, you know. So You're a waiver, bro. You got yeah. like three waivers. You're 100 percent going over. Yeah, yeah. So I like I said, I didn't know what the fuck I was doing or whatever. Finished that shit and then go to SY or I think at the time it was called ITB or whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and so. It was 45 days long. I loved it. Made it to the 40, like the last, I think it's the last hump or whatever that you do. The crucible? In, no, no, no. You already got that at the boot camp. Yeah, this is like in ITV. Hold on, have, hold on. I'm, I'm stopping you for a second. I want more boot camp stories. Right, right, right. This is 
<laughs> fucking hilarious. So, I mean, I guess we can keep going, but I feel like you got some wild. In boot camp? Yeah. Boot camp was crazy. What was it fuck. like back then? Because, I mean, it was pre-war, right? I mean, it's 2000, yeah. so, I mean. It's Korea. They're talking about Korea the whole time. Really? Yeah, they were talking about whatever parallel the Korea, like Korea's on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They'd walk up to you and be like, have you ever heard of the blah, blah, blah parallel? And I was like, I don't like, really, I'm from Panama, bro. What the hell is what's Korea? Yeah, I was like, this recruit does not know, and they would just flip out, dog. I mean, they were, they just had a lot of the dudes that had a lot of fucking time on their hands, and they just, I needed it though. Yeah. To be honest with you, Straight I, you up. I was out of fucking control, man. By the time I got to the Marine Corps, and I, I needed somebody to humble me like that. You okay. know what I mean? And I feel like it'll do it. It'll straighten you up real quick. As crazy as the as that sh- experience was, these fools were gonna put a gun in my hand. They better, they better get my mind right before they do kind of shit, you know? And that's how I saw it, and that's what my recruiter <clears throat> said. And so I took, I took all of it, you know what I mean? Like, the whole, like, when they hang your freaking um, arms over the, the pull-up bars and shit and make you just sit there with your pack on and shit, they were making me, um, they would do stuff like hang your fucking feet upside down from the rack with a mouthful of water, and you couldn't swallow it, and you couldn't drop it, and you had to just sit what? there. What? Yeah, dude. Yeah, you're old school. Okay, so like you're yeah. the guy. Okay, so like so I've never sat and made room to talk to somebody that was. It's always been like my era and then yeah. newer. Damn, dude, Those that's fools. wild. Yo, I would write letters and I'd be like, these fools aren't real. Like if I die and they tell you that I killed myself, they're lying. These fools killed me. <laughs> really? I was, I, in my letters to, back home to boot camp, I was like, these fools are gonna kill me. They don't care. I was like, they're crazy as fuck. This this one time we had we had this. We were, um, it was like towards the end, and we were fucking, you know when you're turning on your gear and shit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so we're all like marching back after turning our gear back, and we had this dude who had a small bladder. Okay. He was always fucking pissing on everybody, dog. Like, <laughs> we'd be fucking walking, and you just, you are marching and shit, you look down, and you see like, because he would just walk and yeah, piss, yeah, yeah. he couldn't oh, hold it no more, yes. and he'd walk and piss. We had a guy in our platoon like that. And so we started, we were giggling, like this motherfucker's pissing on the back of our feet, and we're like laughing or whatever, yeah. and then we get back to our squad bay and our drill instructors tripping because somebody called them and said that we were nasty and oh well i was at a kilo company third battalion in okay. paris <clears throat> and I, like they were fucking nuts back there you yeah, know what i mean I so imagine. we get there and he's like why the fuck is this happening and I mean, at this point we're tired of the dude this dude had freaking slain us and we didn't want to take blame for anybody else and he's like why were you guys laughing and this dude named benjamin he was like He's like, I won't be no snitch. He was like, but it was recruit Thornsberry. He was urinating all over the back of my leg, and then we all just started laughing. And he was, the drill instructor was like, get out. <laughs> he told everybody to get the fuck out, and Thornsberry stayed. That was, in my military career, that's the only time I've left a man behind, dog. Let me tell you, bro. <laughs> he deserved it. <laughs> he deserved it, and I felt so bad, man. We fucking went to go eat chow and shit and came back. Everything was fucked up, and that fool was doing... He was crying, he was doing push-ups over a pile of fucking bleach, dog. And the whole squad bay was just trashed, man. Like, all for pissing on some, the back of somebody's leg and shit, you know Reserved. what I mean? Justified. Yeah, man. Like that, to me, I was, <clears throat> I guess, like I said, that shit was fucking humbling. <laughs> yeah, I could imagine. <laughs> like, you know. So you go on to ITB, which was Infantry Training Battalion yeah. back then, right? Then it went to SOI? I think so. I so think it went that? to SOI afterwards, yeah. yeah. Yeah, So, okay, so how was that? So now you're still trying to figure, you're not even a Marine yet. Yeah. I mean, you're still trying to figure out. I mean, you don't even know what an 03 is. No, I didn't. I didn't know what the 03 was. And <laughs> these motherfuckers, man... They were a great group of gentlemen mm-hmm. to be around, to be honest with you. And, you know, you get there and you got, like, a couple of days before the shit starts. So then, like, them recon dudes start coming up. And they start giving you, like, these, these like, come join us. And they have, they have you sit in a freaking room and you're watching these videos of how great and how awesome of a family environment it is. And, and then nobody fucking volunteers. <clears throat> and they're like, all right, cool. Well, your ASVAB is good and you have good, eye, uh, good eyesight. So... Let's go. These fools made me run some crazy ass shit to see if I, the prequal to some shit. Yeah, what the fuck yeah, is yeah. It called or like, yeah, prequal. Yeah, for, for recon. Yeah. Yeah, they had me run that shit, and I'm like, what? Why am I treading water in a pool holding a fucking brick, dog? Like, what? What is going on? Why I just did my life lead to this. Yeah, like I was like, I don't. But recruiter said you just put up with it, whatever. So I, I passed all that stuff, and then school starts, and they said that like after that you get to run the real. And doc, and after. you're like, wait, what? I was like, that didn't count. <laughs> I was like, that didn't count for GI Joe mode, and I gotta do more GI Joe shit. So then I go to SOI, and that was fucking insane, dude. Like, but I loved it, yeah. and I feel like that is 
a part of my Marine Corps experience that I'll never change in the fucking entire universe. Oh, you know no what I mean? <clears throat> but Why, though? Because of the way everybody was. You know, I got to experience two sides of the Marine Corps. I got to experience that side, and then I got injured on that last hike. Okay. The last hike that I was in. I have flat feet, and I lied about it. Yeah. And I tore my Achilles oh. during that last hike. Really? And at the very end, you know when you're supposed to, like, stay standing and shit, mm -hmm. you know? I, did, I just fell over, and I fucking... They took my boots off and my shit was fucked up, so they put me on med hold. No. And they were like, dude, we're gonna have to admin step you. We're gonna medically, medically retire you because the injuries to the bottom of your feet. And this was some first sergeant that was telling me this shit. And I was like, look, you can't do that. I was like, please, I like fucking, damn near got on my knees. I was like, please, if you send me back home, I was like, you might as well just put a bullet in my head. I was like, I cannot go back to Virginia. I cannot go back to that life. I was like, I'll fucking do everything except put something in my motherfucking body. <laughs> I was like, I will do anything yeah. Yeah. to remain a Marine or just to get a chance to hit the fleet. And he was like, all right. He's like, step out of my office. He made a couple of calls, and he was like, okay, there's an a, a MCT course, like, picking up in a couple of days. If you can run a PFT and pass the PFT, they were like, you can stay in the Marine Corps, but then you're going to go back to being an open contract. You're gonna, at the end of MCT, you'll find out what it is Damn. that you're going to get. And I was like, fine, fuck it, whatever. Yeah. I'll do it. I was like, I don't care. And I was like, what's a fucking PFT with a fucked up Achilles, right? Right, three miles. Oh, my God, dude. They, <clears throat> they let the, my platoon run it with me and shit. Yeah. Those dudes helped me fucking finish it. I think I like had like 30 seconds before I was about to fail. Really? Yeah, I did the 100, 100 crunches, the 20 pull-ups. But that run, dude, to my yeah. Achilles, that shit fucking sucked. And then I had to fuck. I passed that. Then I had to like two days later go into that 14-day... MCT shit, which was cake compared to recon, <laughs> all that other stuff. <laughs> and then by the time we finished, they were like, all right, cool. You're going to be an electrical engineer. Really? Yeah. And I was like, what the How fuck is that? that? And I was like, what the fuck is that? So that school was six months long. And bro, I had never finished. I had never, I've never fucking finished like ninth grade. And now I'm sitting in a classroom and they're talking about physics. <laughs> oh, this journey, I was like, I just got my body strong. Now you're fucking throwing some shit at my brain that I don't even know what the fuck. I'm sitting in these classes in Camp, and uh, was it Camp Lejeune, I think? Courthouse Bay. Okay. And I, and I was like, I spent the entire time in the freaking library trying to learn Ohm's Law and <laughs> physics and how electricity flowed. On a ninth grade education. On a ninth grade education. And I was just like, holy crap. But I did it. I finished it. And I completed that shit. Like with top honors Good or whatever. Good for you, man. You know, Good pretty, for you. I guess I'm a pretty decent mechanic. Yeah. You know, and that's why. I, <clears throat> I did that, hit the fleet, and then, man, that shit was chill, dog. Yeah? Because I, I got to the fleet, I think, like, 2000s, and so 9-11 hadn't happened yet. And, man, that shit was fucking dope, man. It was like, I felt like... Yeah, what the hell were you guys even doing in the Marine Corps with no war going on? Nothing. We were, I mean, absolutely nothing. We'd be, like, day on, day off. We'd, be, we'd have skeleton crews. We would show up at like some oh, half of the God, half of the shop nice. would show up from like <clears throat> seven thirty to eleven, and the rest of the shop would show up from like noon to four thirty and shit. And then what? we were barbecuing all the time. We're on Camp Pendleton, so we're like barbecuing at the beach all the fucking time, playing dodgeball, football. Bro, we did not have the same military experience. That is insane because I've never. Because, you know, when you're in, you don't talk to your seniors on this level. So yeah. I, I've always wondered what the hell dudes were doing before the war broke just out. chilling, dog. Barbecuing. Damn, Barbecuing bro. and just. You're, like, calling all your boys, like, yo, join the Marine Corps. This Straight is Straight up. I was like, bro, this is fucking cake. You just got to, like, plan it out better than I did. You know what I mean? <laughs> plan it out way better than I did. But you just get, get to this point. Yeah. And I, I would always, like, send pictures of the beach. I'm like, bro, I'm on a base with a fucking beach and shit. You know, we're playing dodgeball and <clears throat> boogie boarding on Wednesdays for PT. Oh, shit. Yeah, and then the war happened, and it just fucked everything up, dog. <laughs> it just ruined... It just ruined everything, man. I Yo, on the day that those freaking planes crashed into the towers, it had to have been on a Monday, Wednesday, or Friday because we had done PT, and I was at my house uh -huh. freaking um, <clears throat> getting ready, waiting to get picked up. Oh, and part of the shit is I don't have a driver's license either because... I got arrested. I got my driver's license suspended indefinitely. Oh, Indefin to this day? No, I finally, got, oh. I finally got it back after, like, my second deployment. Really? Yeah. Really? yeah. You're fighting for your country and you don't even have a driver's license. And I was driving the first, the first two times I was a driver. The first two times I was... <laughs> go, go figure. Go fucking figure. So dog. the World Trade Center's fall. Yeah. 
world changed immediately. Did you get a phone call because you're at home or what? No. Nah, <clears throat> we I'm just sitting there watching the news, and I was like, what the fuck? My boy comes and picks me up, get in the car, and he's like, yo, are you listening to the radio? And I was mm -hmm. like, yeah. So we get to the shop. It, it, was, it was nothing like I had ever seen in the fleet, man. It was, all hell broke loose. Everybody went from being nice to being a dick. We were there till like three in the fucking morning, preparing, mobilizing the whole shop, inventorying everything. <clears throat> no shit. And then from that point on, it was just like hell. hell. Just train, 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 the train. The Marine Corps we have, well, used to have now. Yeah. So. And then we didn't know when we were going to freaking deploy, you know? So we were just like, all right, we're just going to train. And then so we just trained until it was time to freaking. What was training like as, for your MOS? CACS, uh, WTI. Okay. So set up. Um, so the first unit that I was at, um, was Mass 3, and that was on Camp Pendleton, but they were a detachment from Miramar, and they supported 3rd Lad. Okay. And then, <clears throat> Damn, Lad was still a thing then, huh? Yeah, and then there was a, a DASC. So we provided um, support for the direct air support people or whatever. And then So what that. exactly were you doing? To, I mean, um, Generators. As Power. So we were you were, oh, which is a huge deal. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> because obviously the COCs, I mean, the command center, everything. Now we're out of fucking electricity, dog. They cannot, never. They can never go down or you're fucked. So, yeah, so I, we, we would provide power for that, and we pretty much wire up little tiny little cities, you know. Really? What we would do. So there was my MOS. I, um, I'm the mechanic, and then there's operators. So there's generator operators, and I'm a generator <clears throat> operator mechanic. And I made it up as far as... Uh, not rebuilding the engine, but replacing engines. Got it. So, so you get the phone call. You guys are deploying. Yeah. What was going through your mind then? Oh, I didn't believe it. That was fucking crazy because <clears throat> they couldn't give us a day when we were leaving. Okay. So then they were like, "You can't leave base. You can't. No, you can't leave your house without notifying your platoon sergeant, and you can't really? be away from your house for longer than thirty minutes. And then if they call you, you have to be able to be back. If they recall, you have to be able to be back at the shop." For like within 30 minutes of them calling you or whenever they tell you to show up. Yeah, so yeah. they would do <clears throat> these mock drills where they would call you and then just make oh, sure yeah. that you're at home. And then uh, it was like a fucking Sunday, man, or a Saturday or something, and I'm just chilling in my house and I get this call and my fucking heart sunk. And they're like, you got to be at the shop within a couple of hours and we're freaking leaving. And I was just like that. Like, we like just, this is not a drill. Yeah, this is, and even then I was, telling, I was telling Dom and Eric, I was like, I thought that shit was a simulation until we were actually like, punching into Iraq is it felt like we were just driving like flying around in a circle and we landed in the same fucking desert that we were training in and they were like oh I just set up camps and shit so I was like there's no way this is real man there's no fucking way that so you wait 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 <clears throat> you they load you on what an AC-130 oh uh, damn what were you on is it a civilian flight or military flight civilian flight okay so you just get on this plane and you still think that this is part of like a training evolution yeah I didn't think it was fucking real <laughs> I didn't think it was real. I didn't think it was real until I put my foot in somebody's face. Really? Yeah. I didn't think it was fucking real at all. I was just like, this is not real. And then you get to Iraq. You land straight in Iraq, or did no, you go to Kuwait first? We went to Kuwait first. So we Wait, went. So the war hasn't even popped off yet. No, we're we're just in That's Kuwait. That's right. So you you're an initial pusher then. Yeah. No shit. Okay, so you land in Kuwait, which is weird because obviously you know between Iraq, Kuwait, yeah. and. That's the whole reason you're there. Where did you guys land? Were you at Kuwaiti Naval Base, or do you remember? Some airport, and then we had to, like, discreetly get loaded into these these long buses. Okay. With the, with the curtains and shit. Okay. And so you couldn't, nobody could see what was inside, and then they didn't have no fucking AC in the damn things. Never. No. Never. It was misery. As soon as you get in there, you're just drenched in fucking sweat, and then you get dropped For off. Hours. In the middle of fucking nowhere. Okay. With all, with all this gear getting, as, as we're getting dropped off, all this gear is getting dropped off from the ships. The, mm -hmm. uh, I forgot what it's called. The like, Mew? Yeah, but yeah. there's stuff on there that they have that's been sitting there for, like, years. Hmm. They're just sitting there in preservatives. Like, okay. on, on the ships, they have enough to fucking have every MOS on that ship and just, like, push, right? So okay, they have, yeah, like, yeah. generators, Humvees, <clears throat> but some of them are super fucking old. So, like, as we were showing up, they're just, like, dropping off. It's like a video game. They're just dropping off all these things that we had to just Sorry. break down and start setting them up and getting them ready to fucking... Okay, so... When you get there, how many – has the, the invasion hasn't gone yet? No. So are you the first wave of Marines? Like, are you setting up COCs? And yeah, yeah. So you're, like, first boots on the ground as far as the, the start of this war. Yeah, we had to set up uh, ammo supply points and then uh, communications in Al-Qut. And then from there, we were running supplies back and forth from Al-Qut to Baghdad. 
after, after everything. Okay, so let's. Pushed in. <clears throat> I don't want to jump there yet. Oh my bad. So, you're getting everything set up in Kuwait. Mm -hmm. Then the 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 invasion. He, did you guys get the call? I mean, did, was there like how was that when they when you heard that we're pushing into Iraq? But by the time all that stuff was happening, we had already set up. <clears throat> I think it was Camp Coyote and then Camp Tara. We already set those places. Camp Tara up. was still there. Well, at least when I was there. That's fucking cool. Yeah. We had, we, had, we had just uh, finished setting that stuff up. So it had like a mini chow hall and you okay. can kind of see the news mm -hmm. and stuff. So we all got to see Bush declare war okay. on the and news. You're in Kuwait and you're in Kuwait watching this. Yeah. That's, pretty, that's pretty cool. Yeah. And then so um, from that point on, everything got a little more tense. Yeah. And everybody started to get ready to just fucking leave. And then he started dropping scuds on us in Kuwait. Shit. Really? Yeah, leading up to us pushing. How was that? Did that's you guys think you were getting like uh, chemical? So you're a mop scary. suit marine. Yeah. See, so anybody <laughs> listening or watching, there's there's two generations of marines. There's mop suit, which was is you, <laughs> which these guys were in complete chemical mop. I mean, what do you even know what mop stands for? But um, there's a complete suit that you have to wear with gas mask and. You guys, I mean, my seniors like bragged about living in these things for like 60 days, 40 days. I mean, 40 like, days for me. I was in that shit for 40 days and I had to piss my, I pissed myself. See, they all, you all. I'm sitting in my own urine, dog. Right? Dude, and so and you know what? And this is what I've always said. You guys can have the initial push. I will give that to you because I hear stories and where guys are like, I'm like, damn, that would have been incredible just to witness. Yeah. The one thing that I don't envy of any story from any veteran of our generation is the mop suit stories. I mean, you hear about guys that shit that had to shit themselves in because they would be under attack. There'd be chemicals in the air, and they'd have like you're 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 zipped up fully in these things for days on end. Man, there's no like fucking little. They should have had like a little fucking pouch to like fucking hang your shit out the side. They didn't think that shit through, dog. Nothing. Like you can, it's nothing. Nothing. You just goes right What's, in there. What was that like? I mean, are you just sweating all day in it? All day, you're just wet and soggy all fucking day. You know, it's just I I fucking hated it. And it, it was just stressful. You know what I mean? Because you just there's the one rule you want to break. We're Marines, and yeah, yeah. we cut corners and shit. And sometimes I just wanted to take that shit off. And I was like, fuck, man. I seen The Rock, bro. I seen those fools die from chemical motherfucking shit on that movie, bro. I don't want to go out like those fools. So I just kept my shit on, you know? And nobody I mean? knew then. No, we didn't. No one knew. No, I didn't want to go out like that. Because so you're just... all waiting for weapons of mass destruction to come and just mm -hmm. melt everybody to the scorched earth. Yeah. Damn, dude. Okay, so... What was the, I mean, you guys had to carry those things everywhere with you, yeah, right? Yeah, so we had the gas mask on the side, oh, okay. and then we had the mop suits in our bags, and then after he declared war, then we had to wear the mop suits, and then he started dropping scuds. It was pretty cool watching, scary and cool watching the, oh, for sure, them being intercepted. Yeah. It was like reverse lightning. It was like the lightning was going up. Because really? he got like clouds, right? And then they would just, they would light up, but the top parts would light up instead of the bottom parts, as really? opposed to like yeah. when lightning strikes a, the part you can see the cloud lights up. It just looked <clears throat> fucking odd and shit. And that shit was scary as fuck, man. <laughs> it's like Henny Penny, the sky's falling. Really? Yeah. Dang, dude, that is wild. Like two in the morning or some shit. One of my buddies was telling me a story that he was driving down one of the main roads at, during that time frame to deliver some parts, and he saw a motorcycle coming towards him. And he was, he was like, fuck, this fool's not getting out of the way. So he said he swerved out of the way, and it was a fucking rocket. <laughs> it was a fucking rocket. Yo, man, we're fucking pogues, dog. We don't know what the fuck. This, he was like, bro, he was like, he was like, the fucking missile just flies by and shit, dog. Like, because well, those scuds will just cruise. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of them that just, they'll just, just like skip and just fucking <laughs> land somewhere and shit. And oh they, my God. They all ended up being empty. You didn't have nothing in them. <laughs> they all, <laughs> you know, I mean, they, we would have known if there would have been gas, right? We would have yeah, never yeah, taken yeah. those fucking suits off. No. No. And so you lived in a suit for 40 days? It was like 40 days, yeah. That's miserable, man. And then I pissed, I had to, I ended up pissing myself. I think the second day of the initial push because we couldn't stop. We, we drove for three days straight, so I, I, I couldn't piss, man. I was yeah. like fucking like, <clears throat> like I couldn't, I couldn't get my shit out. There's no, absolutely no fucking way. And I was just like, one, two, three, go, 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 go. You know, just fucking let it all out, dog. Damn, and then you're just sitting in it. Just sitting in it forever. Man. And then it just becomes sweat, and you just kind of just forget that it's pee, I guess. And then you don't see that in the Marine Corps commercials, huh? Mm -mm. The recruiter didn't tell you about that. No. So you guys do the <clears throat> the initial push happens, and you guys are following right behind. So as they're advancing, you guys are pretty much providing anything that they need, or were you guys set up for a ways and then operating out? No, of we didn't follow anybody in, dog. We went in by ourselves. What do you mean you went in by yourselves? We didn't follow anybody in. We had there was a force protection vehicle. There was my CO. 
me and like six more vehicles behind us. And then we went and fucking drove down that long ass road and then went into Iraq. And that was it, man. That was just us. What? And we just, we had spots that we had to go to and we had to set up like the ammo resupply point. We set that up and we set up comms. And so you guys are just mobbing around in Iraq. Yeah, generator mechanics. Literally the the <laughs> opening hours of Iraq, and you guys are just out there just cruising. You didn't run into any, like, Shit. I mean, back then, what were they called then? What do you mean? The I, IDs or? No, 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 because no, IDs weren't even a thing yeah, then. No. Uh, as far as the Iraqis, they were, I mean, they were the military at that point. Yeah, you it was like bath, par bath party members, Fede Ying. It was stuff like that, yeah. Yeah, because, like, I mean, that was, that was, they were still wearing all Iraq yeah. uniforms. We got to draft them fucking crazy ass oil fires too. Really? Yeah, at the very beginning, like you, you, you cross over. Damn, man, you got to experience so much cool shit. All the stuff we were watching on TV, you were, you were there. Yeah. That's pretty incredible. It, was, it, was, it wasn't cool until afterwards. Oh, though. for sure. For sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's yeah. terrifying. But yeah. like, I mean, now you look back and you got a respect for it. But yeah. So you guys are just out there just setting, you just get like what, a, a nine digit grid and you just had to go and, yeah. or 10 digit grid, whatever, and just go set up these little fobs yeah, pretty yeah. much and then just dropped off a bunch of ammo it was called chesty okay i think i was it was after nazaria and then fucking after that we drove all the way to al -Kut. and then we set up um like supply like a resupply point there and shit and then we would just run supplies to baghdad are there. you guys hooking and jabbing while you're out there or what uh, shit was going down yeah really we're getting ambushed and then really was, Let's, yeah. let me hear some of this so as a, as a generator mechanic <laughs> that had no training like as far as workups like on the yeah. grunt side of things now you're out there i mean you guys are in softback humvees then too right i didn't have a fucking door dog <laughs> i didn't even have, i didn't even have a fucking door man i, I didn't even have a <laughs> Fucking door, dog. Like I just, I still, I get so jealous when I see the vehicles now. You right? know what I mean? I know they're heavy and I know they're hot, but bro, I would have rather. Been oh, hot. for sure. I mean, you had canvas like plastic. Yeah, and then like we put like sandbags on the top row right there, and then we fucking had somebody weld metal plates underneath. Really? Not because we knew anything, but just because I, I figured I was like, I don't know, something like an extra layer. I, I wasn't like it was ballistic armor or nothing. I was just, <laughs> yeah. I went to the weld shop and I was like, yo, can you fit this shit under here? And they fucking put it underneath the Humvee or whatever in Kuwait. And I was like, all right, bet, let's go. And so, you guys just, just, that was it? That was it, yeah. That was fucking. So what were you guys doing when you guys were taking contact? You just bailing out and trying to get off, like, in the. We would, it was, either we would stop and just fucking just start shooting in that direction. Yeah. Or we would just fucking keep driving and just fucking get the fuck out of Dodge if shit got too much for us and shit. And just. We, they would tell us to fucking, we got to go. You know what I mean? So we just keep driving, I guess. Bro, this is wild. It feels weird talking about it, so if I fucking, I guess, but yeah. <clears throat> I, was, I, told, I told Dom and Eric, I, I, I figured our experiences were like the same as everybody else's, so I really no. don't ever like tell anybody this shit, you know what I mean? But like. I'm fascinated by this, man. So like the, I was telling them like when I, I, I thought it was real, was the very beginning when we're in Kuwait and we're driving onto the fucking road. A freaking Mustang fucking pulls in front of us, and I got separated from the vehicles in front of me and shit. You know you what I mean? Stopped. Yeah, I was. Just, I didn't know what to do. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't know if I should freaking plow through it or whatever. My mass arm was like, "You better catch up," and the dudes wouldn't move. I don't think they knew what was going on, so I, I just said, "Fuck it, man." I just started fucking kicking because it sat pretty low and we sat pretty high, so I had enough leverage to start just kicking the passenger side window in, and I just started kicking the dude in the face, and the dude just fucking drove off into the ditch, and then that's just. I was like, okay, this shit's real. You <laughs> that know? was your like uh, aha was, moment. That was immediate, dude. And like, we would drive through crowds, and people would try to get in the vehicles and shit, and we had to fucking what? push them off. Yeah, they were like touching your face and trying to grab the shit on you and stuff, and fucking that shit was fucking weird, man. That's yeah. why like nobody touching my fucking face. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame you, <laughs> yeah. dude. That is crazy, bro. Like, cause like you know, I. And I'm the same way. I feel like from when I was in, everybody had the same experience. But, like, yeah. I forget. Because you hear stories every now and then because you would have been one of my seniors, you know, if at the age difference. Yeah. And, dude, that is nuts, bro. I, I was like, what the fuck? I'm actually, like, putting my hands on people right now, like, fucking to get them to get the fuck off of me. You know what I mean? Like, And you have no door on your vehicle. You're in no. softback Humvees. I mean, obviously, IEDs weren't a thing then yet. Yeah. Um, were you... Were you there when that transitioned, or you were already? I mean, no, they didn't come for years later, yeah. so you were already out of there. But yeah, damn, that's why. What were the oil fields like it was, when you drove through those on fire? Like, what was it smell? It was horrible. 
It was horrible, and I, I'd say the flames are like 50 yards away, and you can still feel like heat on your face. Really? And then it was nighttime, and <clears throat> there was birds fucking like circling that shit, and they would kept flying into the fucking fire, and some of them would fall. It would just look like hell, dog. They were just like circling the fucking oil fires. I don't know why. And then some of them would fucking catch on fire and fucking fall to the ground and shit. That shit was crazy as hell. What? It was weird, too. Obviously, I'm probably going to... I don't know, probably gonna have to fucking suffer the consequences of driving through oil fires. Hundred percent. I mean, we all. Hey, we yeah. got a. We got a. <laughs> so, <laughs> he'll help you out with your claims. Oh, he'll help me out with my fucking claim. Yeah. <laughs> um, damn, dude. I I want to hear as much like. Oh, and to top it off, that road that I drove down to yeah. get in. I mean, I don't have a really good relationship with my pops, but he, after Desert Storm, because he was a, a map maker, mm -hmm. a topographical surveyor for the army, he helped build that road going into Kuwait. Really? Yeah, I never knew that shit until like way later or whatever. That was pretty fucking cool, I guess. Really? Yeah. Damn, that's pretty legit. Once yeah. your dad would stop making bombs for. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, so you, I mean, so what was your day to day? I mean, you're just running supply routes all day? Yeah, so we had our people providing security and shit, and then um, we would get like a list of fucking deliveries pretty much. And we would be delivering everything from food to ammo to whatever, and we just drop it off. At a post in like on really close to Baghdad, we didn't drive into Baghdad. That shit was crazy. That really? Shit, that, you, oh. could, you could feel Baghdad like hundreds of miles away getting fucked up. Really? Oh uh, yeah. Where we were at, we were pretty far away, and I could feel it at night when they were getting bombed and shit. That shit sounded crazy, and it looked crazy too when you started getting closer and closer. Oh yeah. But uh, yeah, we would just fucking <clears throat> deliver supplies, and then come back, and then sometimes uh, people would fucking need us to provide security for them delivering supplies in another direction. So then we would just fucking hop on. Their vehicles. So you're just rolling mobile the whole time. Yeah. We're just helping each other out and shit and just fucking trying to make it the fuck out of there, I guess. What was comms like? I mean, how was the communication between everybody? It was fucking horrible. Yeah? That's why people were shooting at each other. You know, that's why there was a lot of blue on blue back then and shit. You know what right. I mean? Right. That uh, big ass sandstorm or whatever I was telling Dom and Eric that by the time we got to Al Kut and we pulled out of that sandstorm, we had army vehicles behind us. And they just followed us into Al Kut, and there was a, it was like a like two or three vehicles of cooks, and shit, <clears throat> and they had gotten lost, and they just started following our convoy through that sandstorm, and they they thought you were army, or they just rolled. At first they did, but then <clears throat> my, at some point they realized they weren't, but they had no comms with us. Yeah. So they couldn't tell us like, hey, stop. Yeah. yeah. And, and instead of turning around and going back to where they, they came from, you? they just followed us to Al Kut. and they were like, yo, we were fucking pretty much lost, and then we had they ended up staying the whole deployment with us. What? Yeah, there were a bunch of fucking cooks. And all they did was just sit in one corner of the area that we were at, and they just, we just told them to provide security in that direction, taught them how to use their weapons, and that was it. They just did their own fucking thing after that. Nobody came and got them? And they no. I mean, I can imagine back then it wasn't, like, yeah, yeah. easy to go pick people up. I mean, or, or had accountability of wherever. Because, yeah. I mean, there wasn't even, I mean, we were running, what, Blue Force trackers and yeah. stuff when we were in. Did you guys have anything like that, or you just no. you're just looking at a map and heading on a, on yeah. a road? Like, that vehicle in front of me in the convoy, we, we would hang a uh, chem light. And you just, that shit hypnotizes you, dog. Yes. It, it, you're like. Put you to sleep. <laughs> like, like, on the side. Like, fuck. Okay. I'm lucky there wasn't IEDs back then, dog. I fell asleep at the wheel so many fucking I, times. Dude, I, I mean, being, being a tracker, I, I think I was talking about it on James's podcast, but, like, one, my right side of my track, we uh, were, like, two track blocks short. So, when, you know, you but it would pull, and I, I mean, it'd be in the middle of the night, and you know, you got that, the hum, and then you got this giant engine, it's warm, and yeah. it's and then I would just, I mean, I fell asleep, and I had every excuse, too, because my lieutenant would be screaming at me, I'd be like, <laughs> my side's sappy, like, <laughs> it fell out, you know, like, just, oh, we're reading really hot on the gauges, like, I'd always, but I mean, we would just whomp off into a ditch and just come <laughs> back on, <laughs> you wake the fuck up, like, yup, damn, man. No MVGs, either, we didn't have MVGs. You know I, mean? I couldn't even imagine fighting in a war like that is whole, did you do a second deployment or is that yeah, it i did two more after that same thing um so the second time i got augmented to 210 and then from 210 i got augmented 414 that was when we were low on infantry man that's when fallujah was popping off and they were mobilizing artillery units okay as infantry and then they were getting people from random units to fill in spaces and they got myself and a couple other guys so my second deployment I was with 414 and 210. Really? What yeah. was that like? It was interesting, I guess. Oh, you got to experience some crazy shit. I barely really got to do my fucking MOS in, when I was in Iraq. 
I got promoted in Iraq. That was pretty cool, though. Yeah, yeah. I got corporal in Iraq, and I got sergeant. In the so did I. Time. That was pretty so cool. So did I. Yeah, I got corporal in Kuwait and sergeant in Iraq. I was pretty stoked on that. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So then now, now you're a mort or an artilleryman, or, or just infantry dude. You're, so you went from Gen <laughs> generator oh. mechanic. Yeah. To infantrymen, not by choice. Did you volunteer, or did you just voluntold? Man, this is this is this is crazy. So, yeah. I, uh, leading up to that, we had been training to do. Um, um, it's not a humanitarian. I forgot what it was called, but we were going to cultural Iraqi cultural runners classes. So we were going to be talking to sheiks. Okay, and yeah, helping yeah. them like redistribute power and provide a had, had, help them set up a power grid. Yep. And so that's what mm -hmm. we were going to be doing. And so that's all the shit I was learning. We showed up with toolboxes, multimeters, yeah. tape measures and shit. And we were in this lot and the lot ended up emptying out. Everybody got picked up by the units and ours, we hadn't gotten picked up by anybody and went to the COC and I was like, yo, what the fuck is up? And they were like, there's no record of you guys being here. And they were like, you guys aren't supposed to be here. And I was like, well, send us home. And they're like, no, we know somebody who needs you. And they fucking sent us to 210. This is over when you were deployed? This is when we were in Iraq already. This is the second time. So nobody even knows you're even in Iraq. Except for our unit. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Like but some, nobody, like the people there, they have no idea that you guys... Yeah, whoever we were supposed to go to just did not... Have any record of you guys. Yeah. So you're sitting in this lot, like stage. How many days was that? Or was it, was it hours, dog. It was fucking oh, okay. hours. It was like the draft. You know what I mean? Like everybody was just getting picked up. Yeah. And I was like, but we got these toolboxes. And like, well, we got these quad cons. You can just put them away. So we put our toolboxes away and shit, and they reissued us a bunch of fucking G.I. Joe gear and shit, and then they gave us, like, a five-day hip pocket class on how to be fucking... A grunt. A grunt, and then... That's about all you need. And then that was it, man. We were fucking... We were doing, like, uh, we were doing patrols. Wait, QRF. wait, 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 wait. So... They didn't put you in infantry units. They just made you your own infantry unit? Oh, they put us with 414. Okay, so you were attached to a grunt yeah, unit. yeah. And so are you guys, but are you guys operating on your own or you get distributed into their unit? So our dudes stayed together and okay. then they, we have like <clears throat> two or three guys from uh, 414 that would like a sergeant and shit and a couple other people. And then we just followed them around and did whatever the fuck they told us to do. And you guys pushed Fallujah like this? No, we didn't go into Fallujah. Fallujah oh, was happening at that time. Okay. We were catching bad guys as they were coming out on the outskirts. How was that? It was interesting, yeah. stupid. I don't, I don't ever want to deploy with fucking reservists ever again. They were, yeah. The 414 dudes were reservists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they just, they didn't know what the fuck they were doing. They never do. They did not know what they the fuck they were doing. never do. I, like, we were driving around the desert at night with some Garmin. Try, and, and then, like, we were supposed to be here, and dudes telling me to drive a straight fucking line. I'm like, bro, I'm pretty sure there's a hole over there. You know what I mean? Like, we got to go around. He goes, no, we got to follow the straight fucking line. I'm like, that's not how it works, dog. Yeah, that's just the direction. That's just the direction we got to be in, but we got to figure out how to get there. And it just, it was always like that, man. A lot of fucking mistakes. I was telling Dom and Eric that I fucking, we, had, we ended up driving through a helo range that was live. No. Yeah, I, I have no idea how there's any bad guys with our helicopter. I've never been under a helicopter that's firing at fucking tanks until that day. It was like a bunch of Soviet tanks. Yeah, yeah. It was like an old helo range and shit, and we drove through that shit. was scary as fuck, dude. Really? And it, just, it was a mistake. They were like fucking, they put us, that was our mission, and we drove through there, and that was, that was, that was that whole deployment was just like that. You know what I mean? Just fucking wondering what the fuck was next, and I'm like walking down some street with a metal detector, not knowing what the fuck I'm doing. What? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, what were you guys sweeping for? IEDs. Oh, so, okay, okay, yeah. yeah, okay. So this is your second deployment? Yeah. Dang, that shit dude. was fucking nerve-wracking, man. I, was, I bet. I was like, whatever. I just just keep doing my job, I guess, and fucking get paid. But what's your job at this point? You've yeah. had, you're literally the jack of all trades. I mean, yeah. dude, that is insane that you went from mechanic, generator mechanic, right? Then, you, I mean, you just, you get tossed right into the invasion. There's... I mean, I'm pretty sure that happened to a lot of people, and, I, and I'm pretty sure, like, the lack of training showed. There was, there was people that curled up into the field position in my first really? push. Really? We had a gunny who, like, shot one round, which is damn near impossible to be an initial push anywhere and shoot one fucking round. You could fucking shoot more rounds into the sky. This fool shot one round out of his pistol and curled into a, the fucking fetal position. Really? Some people just aren't ready for that shit. No. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, my life was already tumultuous. Obviously, I wasn't ready for war. But I was already, I'd already been miserable, I guess. So, yeah. like, more misery at the time was acceptable, I guess. Okay. Paycheck. Dang, dude. 
That is fascinating to be able to talk to somebody that just that did the initial push, but like had experienced so many different things. I always thought it was boring, man. I don't know until Dom started fucking showing interest. I always thought this shit was boring as hell. Like oh. I, I didn't think anybody really cared. <laughs> See, you know like, because I mean? we showed up on our, and everything's already set up. You're doing left seat, right seat with the units already there. Yeah. They line you up. Okay, here's here's the area that you're going to get engaged from. This is the people work with you, and they're more, a little bit more, you know, accepting of us being it. So, like, things are laid out for us. Like, you guys had no idea. Bro, I was shooting my fucking rifle from my lap, dog. What do you mean? I was driving. My first push. I was like this. When people were fucking shooting at us from the berms and shit. Yeah. This is how it was, dog. Like driving like this. It's straight up how I was like fucking holding the steering wheel and just like, oh my God, what the fuck is going on? I didn't even know. I mean, who the fuck knows where those rounds were landing, man? But I, what the fuck else were we yeah. supposed to do, you know? I mean, like, you don't even have a door on your Humvee and you're getting nah, shot at? Nah, that was crazy. I remember what song I was listening to the first time that happened. It was a Red Man song. It was like Go Nutty or some shit. I have. Gotta mm -hmm. listen to music while I'm driving to mm -hmm. keep me awake. And I, I picked up the smoking habit while I was there because. I would keep the cigarette in my mouth and the smoke rolling up into my eye would keep me awake. So I was just like chain smoking the whole time. And we're about to drive over this fucking bridge and there's a dog, the only animal I've ever seen motherfucking chained in Iraq, like corralled. He was like tied to a, the edge of the bridge and he started to bark. And I was like, yo, top. I was like, that's fucking weird, man. Like this motherfucker's barking. I was like, I never seen a dog out here like tied down to some shit. Yeah. As soon as we get over the fucking bridge, we started getting ambushed. And bro, I, I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. There was shit in the road, and I'm fucking swerving. And I'm grabbing my freaking mass arm by the back of his his, uh, his flak and shit, because that fool almost flew out of the freaking <laughs> Humvee. The you know, fool was dumping out the side and shit, and I, like, swerved to the left, and I was like, oh, shit. And I was like, what the fuck do I do? And he's like, just fucking drive. And we're fucking driving, and he was like, don't shoot. And I was like, fuck this. He kept telling me not to shoot the whole time. He's like, I don't want you to own a life. I was like, man, fuck this. Last time you said that, I ended up smashing some dude's face. I was like, I'd rather just shoot at people. I don't want nobody getting that fucking close to me. You know what yeah, I mean? So yeah. I was just, just dumping as I was driving from my fucking hip right here, like on my... my <laughs> Dude. It's this like, boop, 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 you know what I mean? Like, and we just fucking made it to where we had to go, did a fucking wagon wheel, checked everybody. All the dudes that were all hyped about war were fucking crying. Yeah. That was our first ambush, and motherfuckers were praying and shit. It was a crazy Man. thing. Like, you, you'd walk over to the vehicles and... There was like people just in circles fucking crying and praying and stuff like it had been the first time that they'd ever, like they didn't think that that was going to happen. Like they were in more denial than I was, you know, like they were like, nah. That is yeah. wild, man. Was fucking crying and shit. And That's I wild chaos. Yeah. I didn't even know what, like, how I felt at the time, but I, I was like fucking amped. I had all this adrenaline going and stuff, you know, and at the time it yeah, felt Yeah, but you good. Also, you were, I mean, you had a different childhood too. I mean, yeah. you'd already been through some shit and, yeah. you know, kind of. Kind of experience a little bit of life yeah. versus some kid from like Nebraska that thought he was gonna just go and join the military and do four years and get out. And now he's getting ambushed in soft shelled Humvees. Yeah, that shit was I crazy. mean, that is insane. So, so what were, I mean, you guys didn't have any rules of engagement or anything, right? Well, we got rules of engagement. Our rules of engagement were to fucking run over everybody that was in your way. Really? The, the stuff that we had was mission essential. Mm -hmm. and we couldn't stop for anybody. And at the time, they were throwing kids in front of us to get us to stop. Oh, shit. And then we would stop, and then they would fucking light us up and shit. So we would just just straight drive. It was like a nonstop drive to get these supplies to wherever they had to be. And that's that's during that drive is when uh, Doc's freaking platoon saved my ass. That's right. Yo, I wouldn't be here. We, uh, everything I just described to you, there's absolutely no fucking way we would have survived an L-shaped ambush. All, all people needed was a little more organization, and they would have freaking got... I feel the majority of our vehicles would have got fucked up. And I think like 25% of the people that were there were just not ready for that shit. And so, you know what I mean? You start averaging out some motherfuckers mm -hmm. that are actually more trained and pissed off, thinking that you're invading them and shit. Yeah. And it literally fucking, we just watched Doc's fucking platoon just fuck that, those people up from far away. So for people listening, Doc was uh, is one of our reps for Wishes for Warriors, which... And you actually, you guys met on a trip, which we actually have the podcast, which we recorded. But you guys, we're going to have to get both of you guys on to tell that story again. But yeah, Doc's a rep, and he was on another trip that you were on, and you guys started putting the pieces together that you were there during that push, that ambush moment, and their unit ended up kind of coming through clutch at the last minute. That was crazy, dude. So let's go through that. So like, like, let's, let's 
fill the listeners in on that, um, you know, while you're getting ambushed, how a docs unit came in and kind of saved you guys' ass. So we weren't, we, had, we weren't getting ambushed yet. Yeah, yep. So we were driving, and then we get a call telling us, like, if there's any units in this area, they're like, stop. You're about to roll into a fucking L-shaped ambush. And they were like, set up a perimeter and just catch anybody who fucking, who's running away and shit. And so we listened to what they said. I mean, it was like, that shit happened. We set up our perimeter, and then, like, they were like, we did, I don't know what the fuck the call sign was and shit. You know what I mean? They're yeah, like, yeah. yeah, we did the shit, you know? And next, as soon as they said that, bro, it was like, <laughs> you just see the fucking sky light up and rockets flying everywhere. And you just see motherfuckers get destroyed. It was nighttime, so all you could see was just like yeah, yeah. shit popping off. And I, I don't even know how long it lasted for. Then it got quiet. And they're like, all right, cool. You're clear to go, go through them. Man, we walked through that shit, dog. We drove through that shit. It was fucking mayhem. Really? Yeah, there was just fucking people everywhere. Dead people everywhere. They were going to kill us. <laughs> really? Know? So they had you guys dialed. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that we wouldn't have survived that And that shit. was Doc's unit that found him and yeah. went in there? Yeah, and that's crazy because like, I, when I think about it and I hold my son, you know, mm-hmm. my, my second son, I would have never fucking, he would have never been born, which is Wild, fucking dog. insane, dog. And I just never got to meet that guy, like, just, you know, until this, one of the trips with Wishes. And I was listening to him talk, and I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. I was fucking there. You saved my ass. Crazy, small, dude. Small world in the Marine Corps, I guess. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. I mean, people are connected and through everything. And so, man, I don't even know. You got so many crazy stories. This is awesome. Awesome. Yeah, and it's weird the the your perspective on your time. You don't think it was as cool, or and then we look back on the OG guys, and we're like, man, you guys had it wild. Like like I was saying yeah. earlier about the whole mop suit thing. It's like. We would always hear these stories. And I'm like, no, like, then I would, I'd have been that guy. And I'm like, I don't care, I'll die. Like the 40 days, 60 <laughs> days in a mob suit, like that sounded like hell. So it's fascinating to get different perspectives of the during time of the evolution of Iraq. You, I mean, know? you guys are under under the public eye a lot more, for sure. And I guess that's why I kind of see saw it as something that was a lot more difficult to do. Oh yeah, you know what I mean. Like I feel like the hardships all there. We all experience hardship, but my reasoning behind it being harder for you guys is like the media, the way they portray you guys. Well, that's why you I know. wanted to ask about your your rules of engagement because, I mean, like our second deployment, if somebody ran a checkpoint, you had to like wave a flag at them, shoot a pen flare, pop a star cluster, three warning shots, and then it was shots through, you know, to in through the windshield or whatever. And like, like – there was none of that shit when you guys were there. Mm-mm. I mean, you were just mowing through people. Yeah. I was fucking, it was literally, you guys got to get to this shit. It doesn't matter who the fuck is in front of you. Just get there. What's that like then? Like, I mean, what does that do to your, like, how the fuck do you, how do you process that? At first you're like, this is what I got to do. And I believed in what I was doing and I figured that that shit was justifiable, you know? Yeah. And then um, you start talking to other people on your deployments and, since I was a vehicle in front, I kind of really wasn't seeing if I was hitting motherfuckers and shit, you know, especially on the right side. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the people that I've talked to have been in that, that were in that convoy, they, they remember my vehicle as the one that was fucking mowing motherfuckers down. Really? So I ended up finding out later on that I actually like ran people over and shit. Like, really? That shit felt kind of weird. It feels weird, like yeah. later on, you know, and in the moment, it wasn't like I was like, yeah, fucking, no, I gotta doing kill. The, the yeah. mission, yeah. Just, just going through the motions, doing your job and shit. And then after everything is said and done, and you're kind of like, fuck i kind of did something like that you know what i mean and it kind of just starts weighing heavy then the further away you get from your buddies right and you start getting into like normal life it starts weighing he- heavier on you and stuff you know so that's kind of like why the first push i was just always like eh, i don't know i don't i didn't i didn't think it was that serious because and also we fucking lost you know what i mean like the first push we thought we won and we left we came home victorious man and find out that we fucking lost that shit was she was whack, <laughs> you know? Damn, dude. Yeah, so, like, I don't know. I just figure you guys were doing a better job than we were. No, we just had a lot of guys like you that paved the way for us, you know, that, that figured <laughs> it out the hard way. Yeah. You know, discovering what IEDs were. I mean, remember that was a – nobody even knew what, what the hell happened for yeah. a while, you Those know? Those were putting fucking um, grenades behind propaganda flyers because they knew we would rip them down. off. Yeah. yeah, and they would fucking – blow people up like that and shit really yeah they were little sneaky bastards were you the era where they were putting like um piano wire across roads and they were catching dudes in turrets yeah. and stuff because i remember yeah. hearing stories about that yeah yeah i that was that was the first push you heard about that shit and fucking nobody wanted to get on a turret yeah you're like 
Because then they came out with the the <laughs> rod that like held up and has a little yeah. almost wedge on it because the guys were getting decapitated. That's fucking wild, man. I never experienced that, yeah. but we heard about it and that shit freaked all of us out. You know oh, for I mean? sure. Every time you'd go under a bridge or anything, you're always you're everybody was always watching. And some of the turrets weren't like turret turrets. There was like your canvas was off and you're just leaning on your high back and shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? With your fucking saw or oh some my shit, yo. God, dude. Yeah. I didn't even think of that. You guys weren't even in turrets. You just had a T and E with what a fifty cal mounted to it. Yeah. I mean, what were you guys even rolling then? You had the Mod Deuce and the Mark Nineteens, or we yeah, just Mark Nineteens and two forties, and then fucking um, no one, none of us knew how to fucking use a fifty cal at the time. You know what I mean? So like, we didn't have a fifty cal, yeah, but yeah. we had so we had two a two a couple of two forties and a couple of uh, Mark Nineteens. Then everything else was pistols and they are shitty ass fucking rifles. And you were running like old school M sixteens then, huh? Yeah. My f- big heavy. My fucking the the. Did you have a handle on yours? They, it fell off, dude. <laughs> what the the pistol grip? Oh. <laughs> we, we were like trying to like run away and shit. I grabbed my shit to run away, and my fucking rifle fell off, and I'm just holding the pistol grip, dog. And then the interior of the fucking trigger assembly was everywhere and shit. Yeah, I didn't have a gun for like a day. Oh my god! <laughs> just take off running and shit, <laughs> gathering it up before you take off. Yeah. Damn, dude, that is insane. But like. So you do two deployments and you came back and did a third, right? Mm-hmm. What was that one like? What year was that? The third one, it ha- I got out. It had to be in 2007. It was when, it was when Ramadi was getting. Um, what unit were you with? I ended up with uh, transportation, a transportation company from, it was two something from Lejeune. Okay. And I got augmented to them. This is crazy as fuck. So. I didn't want to go to Iraq the third time. <clears throat> Don't blame me. I have been your experience. Yeah. I, I would be trying to opt out too. I, I honestly did not want to go. And then my staff NCO was like, man, it's going to be easy, bro. Like, he's like, I'll put you in the S4. You can just chill, man. You know what I mean? Like, we just want you there because the Marines fucking respect you and yeah. like, you can get the job done. And I was, he was like, all you're going to be doing is just fucking delivering toilet paper <laughs> to fucking Porta Johns and shit. Like, you're going to be in Charles. Like, man, that's easy, bro. Like, I'll. I'll fucking do that, dog. Yeah. I was just picturing like fucking Dubai. You're not Dubai, but uh, Qatar, you know, yeah, like, yeah, like Libo yeah. and shit, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I get there and I end up fucking pissing off one of the staff NCOs. This is a stupid story, all right? I fucking pulled my butt cheek when I was in Iraq the third time. So I'm in medical like getting. Like strained your butt cheek? Yeah, like I strained it fucking. Uh, I was just running. I was fucking trying to stay in shape, whatever. I was just an idiot dehydrated i guess i don't know but you pulled the butt cheek yeah i pulled the butt cheek okay. i'm getting my shit massaged by the fucking corman chicks okay. in freaking uh iraq and in walks the staff nco that's freaking having an affair with her and he was my staff nco no he looks at me and he just fucking walks out and i was like whatever goes next thing you know bro he's knocking at my freaking door and he's like hey you're going to ramadi for three days and i was like all right cool like what the fuck is in ramadi and he was like you're just gonna set up power for a transportation unit, and then we're gonna bring you back on day three. And so I was like, all right, cool, but I didn't trust them, so I packed all my shit, and I ended up being a reminder for the rest of my fucking deployment. This motherfucker sent you off? Yeah. Cause he's having an affair with the corpsman. And he thought that I was freaking. Were you? No, hell no. 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 I gotta ask. <laughs> I swear to you, I wasn't, dude. <laughs> I was too fucking miserable out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shit, man. Like, half the time, I couldn't even fucking get it up, dog. Yeah. Took off, man. I'm just fucking over it. But anyway, sorry. If anybody's nah, you're that. good. You're good. But yeah, so I get to Ramadi, man, and that shit was just something else, dude. Like, what year were you in Ramadi? I, it was either like... seven. Yeah, it was like somewhere in between 2005 and 2007. I you weren't remember. there with 2 4? Mm mm. It was 2 something, and it, okay. was, it was like. It was, but it was a transportation unit. Okay, okay. Right? And then what we were doing is we were. Well, they were, and then I ended up doing it because I had no other job. After I showed up and I set up power for them, I had no fucking anything else to do. So then I started being an A driver for them, and then we were picking up um, Iraqi police at Biop. Wait, so you just you did your you did it in three days? You're you're done. You did yeah. everything, and you just hang around for a couple of days, and we're like, hey, I'm just here. Or did I was you like, wait for a job? Yeah. Like, no, you couldn't be like, hey, can you guys come get me? Like, like I woke up and I and I went to um, I, mean, I couldn't call my unit. I don't know how I didn't know how to fucking do that. So I. I show up to the COC that I had set up, and I was like, all right, cool, like, is everything good? I, I, can I go back? And they were like, no. Like, you're here. And I was like, what the fuck am I supposed to do then? You know what I mean? Like, they're, they're, like you're just here. And I was like, give me a job then, because I'm just sitting in a tent, you know, in Ramadi. So then I started freaking being an A driver for them. Really? And yeah, and then we were picking up uh, Iraqi police at Biop. 
and dropping them off in fobs. What was that like? That was crazy, man. Those dudes were sketch. Those dudes <laughs> were sketch, and they're scared shitless. And, oh, yeah. and then at that time, nobody was really, like, ambushing us, but people would take pop shots. Yeah, yeah. At your vehicles and shit when you're like driving by or whatever and fucking and you're in armored vehicles at this point they're sort of metal doors okay but you still have like a it's like that metal door that has like the little zipper not no. even a zipper it's just like uh this part right here there's nothing here but it's just like like from here on down it's like metal okay you know and then you just fucking open it's not even heavy and shit but i guess it's just to protect your face but we had those yeah, so you went through like the evolution of this war yeah from the very first day to now you're <laughs> seven years later yeah or no yeah five years later or so six years later or four or five years later but uh math marine or marine for ma math for marines i never did i those. can't even figure out when i deployed dogs so oh dude i know i can't even remember the dates my wife will ask me stuff and i'm like i don't know like somewhere in between this yeah. time frame it happened that's i always say so you just jump in this unit and you just start rolling with them yeah and then yeah we just started fucking i had nothing else to do and i didn't want to sit around so i just started freaking Passing out those flyers, the ones that are like, if you guys are here tomorrow, yep. shit, you know what I mean? So that was 4th of July. So the 2nd of July, we passed out a bunch of flyers. 3rd of July, passed out a bunch of flyers. Then 4th of July, we're delivering Iraqi police in Ramadi. So that was, that was when, that's how I remember it. That's how when, like, whatever year that we were having a fucking serious conflict in Ramadi. Like, there was a hospital in there that was overrun. Yeah, there was a lot. There was overrun a lot. And shit. 2007. Yeah, it was 2007. And that yeah. shit was, dude, that shit was wild as fuck, man. Driving down these little tiny ass alleys. Little roads. And then we had to get out of the vehicles and we had to grab like these sticks and lift up power lines to get underneath yes. the power lines to freaking deliver supplies and shit. That shit was insane, dude. And then <laughs> what's even fucking crazier about that is the dude that I'm with, I don't fucking know him. And then we started taking like indirect fire a little further behind us. Mm -hmm. And then so he got scared and he freaking speeds away. He's a sergeant, and the Marines that are in the vehicles behind us are his Marines. Are you a sergeant at this point? Yeah. Okay. And so he freaking parks next to, like, a bunch of tanks and shit, and he's like, I'm not moving from here. He's like, fuck this. He's like, I'm fucking done. And I was like, bro, where the fuck are the rest of your Marines at? And he's like, I don't care. He's like, really? I'm sitting in here, and I'm, his name was Castro, bitch. Sorry. No, you're good. But, yeah, anyway, you can bleep that out later. But this motherfucker was like, he was like, I'm not going out there, dude. And I was like, yo, don't fucking leave me. And I was like, I'm just going to walk around the corner, and I'm going to go fucking see if I can bring our dudes, you Wait, know? you guys are in that, like... In Ramadi, in bro. In Ramadi? And you're just walking by yourself? Yeah, I'm fucking in a fucking flight suit, all right? Because I was too lazy to put my camis on. I'm in a flight suit with a flag jacket, and I have, like, two magazines <laughs> and my rifle, bro. And you're just cruising Ramadi. Yeah, I was like, look, I'm going to go get them real quick. And I was like, I'll fucking be right back. And I got lost. <laughs> I got... Fucking Franklin is lost, and I was like, my fucking watch is going off and shit's beeping and stuff. It got super fucking quiet, bro. Was this at night? It was at night. <laughs> and I was like, dude, I need to find, I was like, I need to find some grunts. And I was like, I'm fucking lost. I was like, I need to find some fucking grunts, dude. And you're in a flight suit. Yeah, and I, off in the distance, I see a bunch of dudes doing some shit, and I was so scared to approach them, man. I was like, these fools are gonna fuck me up. I could tell they were like Marines or Army, and okay, I was like, so you could tell they were us. Yeah, and I was like, ah, oh, man. I, I, so I kind of like laid down on a curb, and I tried to look like trash. I saw those fools go that way, and I was like, all right, I'm gonna go that way. I waited a little bit, I followed them. And then eventually were they on foot or on in on vehicle? Foot. Okay. And then I ended up rolling up on I saw these fucking Humvees posted like this, like this, and like this. And there was dudes. And I, I just held my rifle up, had my ID in my hand, and I was like, yo, I'm fucking lost. I was like, bro, don't shoot me, dog. And they were like, what the fuck? They're like, how the fuck did you get out here? They're like, who the fuck are you? Get the fuck away from us. They were like, go. I was like, yo, where are the tanks at, bro? Because I parked my fucking car over there, and I was like, I need to get back to my fucking people and shit. And I was like, I don't know where the fuck I'm at. And they just chewed my ass and shit. They're, they're a bunch of fucking corporals, man. I got to love them for it. And they're like, fuck you, Sergeant. What the fuck you doing out here? Kept walking. Oh, my God. And I find my Marines, or his Marines, and they had no room for me in the fucking vehicle, so I had to walk in front of the vehicle and escort that vehicle. Those vehicles all the way to where we had to fucking be, dog. I was such a fucking stressful night. And then... Then we fucking pull into this fucking compound with this dick that I had to fucking drive with. And I just could not stand oh. being in the vehicle with him. I couldn't see shit. We were behind these tall ass fucking walls, you know? And so like the, it was a, not, it was one of those um, vehicles that looks like a frog. It has articulated steering. 
It's not a. It's an AAV. I'm. I was a tracker. We were, it was a tractor to have no. wheels. It had. It had eight wheels, and in the front of it looks like a fucking frog. You know what I mean? It's shaped like this, and then it, it, it like has articulated steering. It's not an AAV. Does it break in the middle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, those were those old school. Like they would use them for like refueling and things yeah, like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like it had like a little like hatch. I'm fucking crawl my ass out the hatch because I want to see what was going on over the fence and shit. <clears throat> and motherfucking didn't know there was a tank in front of me, and it fucking shot around. No. And I freaking got launched, bro. No. And that's how I fucked my neck up. Really? Yeah, I ended up getting launched from the fucking vehicle, and I ended up doing a fucking face plant in the fucking ground off of that shit. And then, Those are pretty tall. They're, what, 12, 13 feet Yeah, tall. bro, and I fucking couldn't feel the side of my face and shit, and then I just had neck pain in my neck forever, and then I ended up finding out that I fractured my neck when I was when that shit happened. Wait, 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 wait. So you climb out of this vehicle, and there's, a, there's an Abrams parked in front of you? I don't know what kind of tank it was, but it was a tank. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't t- I didn't check the license plate, bro. We were like this. And I didn't see it, dog. And that shit just shot a fucking round, man. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, was... that'll suck the air out of your lungs when you're near na- I mean, there's nothing. You can't describe the pure. I mean, you can't because you went through it. But, like, I've been behind, like, Abrams yeah. when they've fired the main gun. And it, like, sucks the, like, the soul out of That's your body. That's what I was going to say. It felt like somebody kicked my soul out, bro. Yeah, 100%. I, I was like, yo, I'm in the fucking sky. <laughs> I was like, what the f-? And then just hit the ground and shit. And now I'm even more miserable, man. And I was like, well, yeah. like, this dude parked in front of another fucking tank. I didn't even know, dog. And I get in the vehicle. How did you not beat this dude's ass? I wanted to so bad, dog. Damn, Weird. He was the only one, the only driver there and shit. But that's how <clears throat> I fucking got that injury and shit. And that was on the 4th of July. And that's like how I, own, that's the way I remember that day. Yeah. Because that's the day that it was just fucking sheer chaos. I feel like deployment. you have so many stories. A lot of a lot of us do, man. We just fucking think that nobody really cares to listen. Oh, we care. (laughs) care. (laughs) That's why I had to have you. A lot of mundane shit too. I'm pretty sure you always hear about. I mean, yeah. I mean, there's always those times, but then you know when those that stuff pops off, it's like that's what makes it in you know not enjoyable at the time. You can look back and laugh at it and be like, holy shit. That's the beauty of Marines, bro. Like we never stop trying. I mean, whatever it is that we're doing, you can call us everybody's a rifleman or not or that argument or whatever. But the one thing about Marines is, no matter how fucking miserable we are, we never stop fucking trying. Or fucking around or trying to make yeah. the best out of yeah, it. Yeah, we make the best out of fucking everything, and then we just keep on fucking going. Like, if we fall, we fall forward. Yep. You know, we don't fall back and yep. shit. And that's one of the things I feel that, like, has kept me around, I guess. That's good, man. Yeah. How have you dealt with it? Um, I, had a couple, I had some guys reach out and some some listeners, and um, one of the big questions is, is, like, after going through all that bullshit, like, how, how did – these are other vets that are asking, you know. And I'm going to ask Dom when we get him back on for the next – part of it but um how was it dealing with like the 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 mental stress or the mental dealing with this like coping with the ptsd and i mean because like do you went through so many different phases of this war yeah like what was how i mean you get back you realize your neck you shattered your neck by an abrams tank blowing you off the top of your vehicle which i mean people probably just listen they'd be like oh man that sounds wild but like you have like, you can't describe the power of a main gun. Like, there's... Especially if you don't know it's there. Oh, yeah. I didn't, I, didn't know, I didn't even know it was there or if it was going to shoot around. I didn't fucking know anything. I'm just like, dog, I'm just going to go look over this fence real quick. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, next thing you know, you're like, fuck. You're on the ground and shit. I had, I had never been in front of a... Or by a tank that shot around ever. Yeah. In my entire life. Yeah. And you'll never forget it either. No, I will not. I'm... Dealing with that shit, I mean, obviously I didn't deal with it. I ended up fucking having to get medically discharged. Really? And a lot of it had to do, I think, like the unit that I was at. So I, I, whenever I would come back, I would, I'd get put with, you know, a normal unit that like, like well, generator mechanics yeah. or whatever, you know. And Did you feel at home with those guys or Never, no? dog. Never, never, man. They, all, they ostracized me. The first unit I checked into, um, they saw that I had a combat action ribbon and they tried to make me take it off. Really? They're like, there's no way. They're like, there's no way you have that. And then fucking one of the dudes had to pull it up on 3270 and shit. You know what I mean? So, like, all the old heads there, they're looking at you like, this, fuck this dude. You know They've never I mean? accomplished anything yeah. like you did. Yeah, exactly. And you're, like, just trying to get by. You're like, you know what I mean? I, and I thought I was showing back up to, like, a supportive group. And I was like, y'all the ones who sent me over there. You could have gone yourself. And now you're mad at me because I, can't, like. Did some shit. I that did was... some shit that was fucking commendable, I guess. You know what I mean? And so, How'd it, that feel? 
that's why I ended up having to get out, dog. I felt I was like ashamed, bro. I was like already ashamed of what I had done. Yeah. And then the units that I was at, they weren't like treating us. Not like anybody has to treat us like heroes, but might just be like accepting. Accepted, yeah. Yeah, and they just weren't, dog. Our leadership styles were totally different. You know, like when you're like I didn't go to corporal's course. I picked up corporal in the first push, and I didn't go to sergeant's course. I picked up sergeant in my second deployment. So yeah. like. My methodology of fucking leadership was way different. Oh, for sure. You know, and it just, you didn't have to be taught how to be a leader. You just learned it from real world experiences yeah, like, of trying to survive. And they just didn't like me, man. And I feel like um, the last unit that I was with was 373 on Miramar. It's probably one of the worst units I've ever been to in my fucking life. Why is that? Because that's a reserve unit too, right? No, that's just a regular <laughs> unit on Miramar. Oh, okay. And it's dog. They they you show up. None of them. None of them have seen anything that the, the entire unit itself has not seen anything anything like that and the thing about me is the units that i was with couldn't deploy as a unit so that's why we were always getting augmented to other units yeah because you're almost going as a platoon or like a section yeah you know, like, to deploy you guys it was like five people getting augmented because yeah, like, they don't need a whole platoon yeah of mechanics yeah exactly so like um and so like now you have 373 which is they're just not gonna deploy that entire unit and do shit like that, you know yeah. what I mean? And their yeah, yeah. their deployment experience is so plush. They got like fucking uh, AC rooms and AC, shit, and like they have like salsa night and shit, you know what yeah. I mean? So like they just I get to that unit and man, I, I I had already started my like downhill spiral, drinking a lot, and I, and I just was not getting along with any of those people, and I, my memory started to slip. Really? You know? And that was before. Like, we knew that PTSD was a thing was a thing and shit. And then so, like, I, I needed to occupy my time. So I started playing ball for the Marine Corps okay. and stuff. And then I got a concussion. And then they freaking, um, they were, they monitored me for, like, five months. And then they're like, why are you freaking. How would you get a concussion? Just fucking 250-pound fullback. Oh. I was, probably, I was a safety. Yeah. And it wasn't like a TBI. It was just like a concussion, and then it put me in the system. Okay. Right? And so they started checking me out, and they, were like, they thought I was faking something because my symptoms, the PTSD symptoms, are very similar to a concussion, right? Mm -hmm. And so they thought that I was faking something. They are like, they started to send me to these people to talk, and they started asking me questions and trying to get me to, like, slip up. And I was like, I don't even know what PTSD is at this time, you know what I mean? And I was just fucking getting checked up for a concussion, and this lady started to antagonize the fuck out of me. How? She was like, I forgot what she was saying, man. That was, she was, she, I thought I was going in from my head and she started asking me about my mental state. Okay. And then she was like, do you, do you feel like killing yourself? Do you feel like hurting others? And then she was like, and I'd be like, no. And then she'd be like, well, then why are you displaying these symptoms? You know, and I'd be like, I don't fucking know. And then she just kept, she just kept fucking with me. And I lost my fucking temper and I tried to punch her in the face. Really? Yeah. I fucking slipped and I like pushed the fucking table against her and shit and I was just like fuck dude I was like I'm sorry and then she apologized to me and she explained to me that those questions were to catch fucking uh, fakers I guess malingers okay. those questions that she was asking me and she like apologized and stuff and then that's, that began my journey man they fucking sent me to, to psych and then they fucking took my rifle card away and then that was it man I fucking began my journey out of the Marine Corps Damn, dude. It was fucking sad, dude. What'd that do to your freaking mental health now that you're you're taking the last, like, they did this to you. Like, that's, you didn't choose this, and, and you know, and, and then you get that, and then now all of a sudden you just, you got the whole rug pulled out from underneath yeah. you. How'd that feel? It fucking sucked, dude. Those motherfuckers treated me like shit, man. Yeah. They, uh, because they just didn't understand. I didn't even, like, I, re I retired. I didn't even get a fucking flag. Damn, dude. I, st I stole the couch out of my fucking office. I was like, this is my retirement flag because they didn't they didn't give me a fucking ceremony they didn't acknowledge anything you're not in a combat unit how many i mean how many guys had a, a combat action that you were dealing with any one other guy one other guy so you guys were looked at uh, that's so wild that they were you guys were treated like that he was in the first push too he was a generator generator mechanic in the first push and so he had um he was he became a drill instructor and then he got fucking in trouble being a di then he ended up showing up to that unit and we both had issues but we didn't know what the fuck was going on yeah and I, so I got put on, what is it, med hold? Not med hold. Light duty? Limited duty? Yeah, yeah, limited duty. One of those or whatever. And on there, you can't fucking do, do you can't like do duty in that. And they would, they can't open your file and see why. And then they see an able bodied person mm -hmm. and they don't understand that, like. So they think you're some malingerer. Yeah, bro. I fucking, <clears throat> I was so on edge that I always rolled strapped. Like, really? I, I always had my fucking 45 on me, like, to the point where, like, a car startled me one time and I fucking shot 
the car up. Like, and the, you know, alarms like go off on accident and shit. Bug me the fuck out, you know what I mean? And I just opened fire. Because I mean, dude, you're you're the first initial guys. Like, they don't even know how to treat. Yeah, I was handle you yet. I was fucking bugging out, man. And these people didn't fucking understand me. And they tried to put me on duty one time, and then they they held me in front of the fucking in front of three hundred people and started chewing my ass. Because I, I, I was like, dude, I'm, I'm on limited duty. And they were, like, calling me a malinger and shit. Yeah. And then I called my chief warrant officer. At some point, you're getting asked to. You're just like, fuck it. And I called my chief warrant officer. I was like, yo, these fools are tripping. And I didn't say it like that. I was yeah. like, they're chewing me out. And they're trying to get me to do fucking duty. And they won't listen to, to the orders in my fucking shit. And then he was like, put it on speaker. And I was like, all right. And he was like, is, he's like, is Gunny so-and-so there? And he's like, yeah, I'm right here, sir. And he starts explaining how fucking horrible of a Marine I am. And then he's like, lock your fucking body. He's like, Kuros, is his body locked? I was like, uh, yeah. And he starts fucking chewing this guy out over the phone. Really? Right? Yeah, in front of the whole He made him stand at attention? Yeah, I was like, he's standing at attention, sir. <laughs> and he starts chewing his ass off, bro. And he's like, you leave my fucking Marine the fuck alone and shit. Like, he's like, do not make me fucking come back here and fucking speak to you ever again on this. And so then that was the remain behind element. That chief went off, so they fucking deployed. And my last days in the Marine Corps showed up, and like I didn't even fucking. Nobody said anything. Nobody huh? said anything. I mean, I hadn't deployed with those guys. And, that was, had, and you did four years. I did. I did nine years. You did nine years, yeah. and they just like you didn't even exist. Yeah, there was Dude, like, that's gotta crush your your freaking soul yeah. doing that alone. So I ate a lot of food in the soda mess the last day, and I fucking stole my couch in my office. <laughs> and that was it. That was that was my retirement. That's how you got out. That's how I got out. Yeah. I hate to say it, that's such a Marine Corps thing, though. I, I always yeah. say that on this podcast, but, like, people don't understand. Like, that's just, you hear this. So then you get out, man, and then, then what? I mean, you're, you, were you going to career it? Mm. Did you plan on careering I it? I was thinking about it. I mean, it, that was my first job ever. Yeah. Marine Corps was, like, my Your life. My life, though. Like, I, didn't, I had never paid bills. I had never functioned fun- as a normal human outside yeah. of the military. And, like, so, you know, my life. I got fired. It's like pretty much I, mm-hmm. I got I got fired and stuff, and I kind of like wild out for a little bit, man. I was, As in hell. I just started getting myself into a lot of trouble. Partying? Uh, not necessarily partying, like fights and shit, okay. you know what I mean? Like yeah. I, I, I'm not really much of a partier, and at the time I didn't have a lot of money, so I started fucking getting into more trouble, and I, uh, I was like, fuck this, man. I can't set this example for my kids. After just like setting up this mm-hmm. the, the the military stuff like this is something that i can show them that i did and i'm yeah. about to fuck it up so then i was like i gotta go to school so i started to go to i tried to go to school and i freaked out so then i went back to therapy and then i went back to school and i got my degree and then and on the way i freaking got full custody of my kids and shit and good for you dude. here i am talking to you there's a lot more stuff that happened along the way but yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, whatever but just got myself in trouble and before i got myself in too much trouble I fucking stopped, went to therapy, and I cannot advocate that shit enough, dude. Like, Why? Because, man, like, you're talking to somebody who deals with this shit on a regular basis, and they end up becoming this voice of reason. I ended up, except for, like, one of my therapists, I ended up getting really close to all my therapists. Cause mm-hmm. They fucking helped me. That exposure yeah. therapy shit fucked me up. As in how? They, they had me, so exposure therapy is supposed to expose you to what you experience mm-hmm. so it doesn't freak you out anymore. Yeah. And the first, I, there's a lot of things that happen in the first push that I morally don't, that I did, that I don't, that doesn't sit right with me. For sure. And then so when I was going through that shit, trying to like come to terms with that, so you have to sit there and you have to explain what it is that fucked you up. And then you record it and you go home and you have to listen to it every day. And so like, I, I was thinking to myself like, I feel this is my morality. Like I feel that what I did, I did something that was out of line and incorrect. And if I sit there and become desensitized to it, then I feel like I'm starting another problem. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So like that shit just ended up fucking me up. It ended up making me relive. I still have that recording at home. I've just that shit just. When's the last time you listened to it? Probably like six years ago. Yeah. Six or seven years ago, probably. Why do you hang on to it? Are you ever gonna listen to it again? Yeah. You think so? Yeah. It's pretty deep, though. Yeah, it is. You know what I mean? And so I went through that shit, and then I ended up fucking school up because of it because I just freaked out. And then I, like, dropped off the face of the earth for a while. I just tossed my phone away, and it was just my boys and I, and I wasn't driving. We were just walking everywhere. I lived pretty close to a grocery store, and and then um, that wasn't enough, so I just fucking went back to therapy and told them I didn't want to do exposure, and then I got my mind right, dude. 
And that shit was ex- extremely, I wouldn't have been able to do it without a therapist. Really? Yeah, I don't have parents, dude. Like, I don't, I don't really stay in touch with my family. I don't have people, like, that I can go, other than you guys, that I can go and, like, talk to mm-hmm. and be like, this is what happened to me, you know what I mean? And, and oh, it's okay, man, you know, that hug you get from yeah, your family yeah. and shit, you know, I never got that. So I, I found that in my therapists in the VA. And, like, fucking, I had some pretty decent experiences with them. Good. And one of them, like, I can text her when I'm freaking out. Really? And I'm like, I'll text her and I'm bugging out, and she'll, like, walk me through it and shit. And if I have to call her, she'll... Is she still a therapist, or has she moved she, on? She's still a therapist. Okay, cool. And she, like, dog, she'll, like, she's not even getting paid by the VA anymore. And I can text her and I can be like, I'm having a little bit of issues right now. And she'll fucking walk me through it. Damn, dude. Yeah. Good, I'm glad. How's it been now? I mean, <laughs> since you've had some time to heal and gone reflect on everything i mean doing a hell of a lot better man yeah every like i said we fall forward you know what i mean i fucking got my degree man i can't complain i got my degree and i'm and i'm right now in the process of applying for a master's program i was there for that dude yeah <laughs> that shit man so much man yeah nobody else showed up man my fucking we got you yeah Yo, you guys showed up dude like we got you nobody showed up to my graduation but y'all man i fucking meant so much to me yeah i was like like i finally did it bro like i finished like i fucking I had to feel pretty good to walk that stage and yeah and especially everything you know going from your background and family history and childhood and then to walk that 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 stage you know and get your diploma so that's what i want my kids to know about me yeah is that like this and that's the example i want them to follow i'm stoked yeah but at the same time i mean it might not be our proudest moments in the military but it's still it's still a moment yeah. you know that I, I it's i'd like to actually know your i'm gonna ask you a question on this one it might be you know personal or whatever but our political and you know environment that we're in now and in the situation and knowing what we know now about iraq and afghan and stuff how do you i mean what's your take i mean how do you feel overall do you feel like we did the right thing would you do it again i mean how what's your what's your opinion on where we're at now would you let your sons join the military we'll start with that one i'd be lying to you if i told you i wasn't scared man my son, my son's 20, bro. Yeah. Like, freaking, if he would have, imagine if he would have gone to the same war I went to and he would have got fucked up too. Mm-hmm. And or then the war now. Yeah. And so at the time that we were doing it, I truly and honestly believed in what we were doing. For sure. And I would never change those experiences, but I can't help but feel duped sometimes. 100%, man. You know what I mean? I can't help but feel duped because sometimes people will ask me like, what were you doing out there? And I, and I don't know how to. How do you answer it? How do, how do I answer it? Other than having my friends back. Mm-hmm. I, I was listening to my superiors and having my friends back, and that's pretty much like the most solid explanation I can give to people. As far as like the political shit was concerned, like I, what I told myself is I'm never gonna vote for my boss. Yeah. So whoever is, and that's what for me is being a Marine. I'm not gonna question, even if it was somebody that I don't align with politically. You know what I mean? Like he's my boss, and this is just it, it is yeah. what it is. I signed that contract and shit. You know what I mean? So. If, I feel weird sometimes, you know what I mean? I feel that that's the best way is we feel duped for sure. And, you know, because, like, we, we fell for the 9-11 shit, mm-hmm. you know, knowing what we know now. I mean, I know people will probably question me on that, but I'm I'm a tin hat conspiracy person for sure. But it's like we were never looking. I don't know about you, but we were never searching for weapons of mass destruction ever. And then they would be like, well, it's hearts and minds. And I look back at it now. It's like, well, if it's hearts and minds, let's get the fuck out of here. Like, what are, we, what are we doing here? Like, no shit these people hate us. I would hate anybody that's that's in our country doing, driving around like they own the place, fucking everything up. Mm-hmm. And we're kids. Yeah. With war machines just driving through buildings and homes and blowing shit up like and thinking it was the greatest thing ever because we're helping you know how pissed we were dog hanger after hanger finding hangers full of gas masks i was like there's no way these motherfuckers are dropping gas on us they're all here they're all here there was just piles dog as tall as this fucking light piles of just gas masks motherfuckers were just taking them home just freaking collecting them and shit you know like i don't want none of that stuff you didn't bring home any cool souvenirs i brought home so careful what you say but yeah. Yeah, you got some cool <laughs> souvenirs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll take yeah. that later. <laughs> we got some money and some other things. I mean, I got I got to bring home some cool stuff. Yeah, the the, the 10,000 dinar. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking rich, dog. <laughs> Bro, how cool, I mean, when we were there, we would have these wads wads of money of dinar i mean dude you're playing spades like you're just throwing down like million dollars in dinar. I mean, just just literally 
bundles of just cash Can everywhere. you imagine if that shit would have kept its fucking value? Ah, uh, dude, none of us would be. I wouldn't be sitting here, that's for sure. I'd be fucking in the Bahamas somewhere. Fuckers were coming home with suitcases. Suitcases. Good dudes were packing sea bags. Yeah, I just told myself, I, I'm going to have 10, so I had 10, 10 grand fucking dollar bills. Yep. And then see what, I mean, bills, I see what the fuck happens. Nothing happens. Nothing ever happened. Negative. Yeah, right? It's nostalgia. I guess. <laughs> you got to pay to have it now. Yeah, exactly. Well, dude, I really appreciate uh, you coming on and telling some stories, and we'll have to have you and Doc back on. But I, I appreciate you paving the way for us and kind Thank of being you, the, the initial guys, the kind of been the literally paved the way for us next generations to come after you guys. I mean, I couldn't even, I couldn't even imagine the shit you guys had to go through and the lack of information and intel and <laughs> and just pure just. T- will dog yeah just go we believed in what we were doing you know what i mean you just did that's just like i listened to one of the podcasts that you did and i think his name was i forgot what his name was he was a, a, a tanker yeah james nash yeah, yeah, yeah and something that he said man you know, or i forgot what one of you guys said it was you, you have 20 marines mm-hmm. bro and you give them what they need to accomplish the mission look at fucking anything dog, Fuck dog. everything up even if they don't know what the fuck's going on i have no idea and people can't so, you know, you've dealt with Britt with my wife because she's like mama bear for the, the organization. But and she, I'm going to have her on. It's going to be I mean, we're going to probably do a bunch of them together. But you ask her right now, you're like, what branch if you ever can do and have anybody to do anything? She'll be like Marines, 100 percent Marines. She's like, I don't know what it is about you guys. She's like, I can't ever put a finger on what it is. But she's like, if anything ever needs to be done, you ever need somebody to have your back to be trusted. But then they say, you know, you can trust a Marine with your life, but not your wife. And <laughs> yeah. just remember that one. No but, uh, you know, and there's just something that separates the mindset. And so like, I've been asked, you know, and I like to ask the question if, you know, you know, would you do it again? And it's, it's a tough one for me to ask. Cause I, I have that in the back of my head. Like we got duped, you know, like mm. we, we got lied to hundred percent. They knew there was no weapons. They knew, they know what's going on. It's war and we see what's happening now. But at the same time, it's like, fuck, like, that was the greatest time of my life. Yeah. Greatest time. The, some of my best friends to this day, like they can call me in the middle of the night, like, they just murdered somebody and I'm on the way. Can I say something else you can edit yeah. out of you? No, like, yeah. Did you ever watch, so after that shit, there was a 60 Minutes, um, and it was a, on the guy who was Saddam's like escort. He was like an <clears throat> FBI agent okay, or whatever. And so this is after Saddam got executed or whatever. Yeah, the fuck happened. Him. Yeah. So I they, was in Iraq for that when, when they hung him. That's crazy as shit. Mm-hmm. So they interviewed that guy, and they were like, you know, what was the deal with him? And he, they, he said that Saddam was telling him, and I don't know if this is true, but this is on 60 Minutes, and he, he said that Saddam was telling him that the only reason why he said he had weapons of mass destruction was to keep everybody out of Iraq, right? And then he, behind closed doors, told Bush, he was like, yo, dude, I don't have shit, but I'm going to keep on announcing that I do, and I'm going to pretend like I'm going against you guys. And he's like, are we cool? And then they were like, yeah, you're cool. He's like, I'm still going to let you guys come inspect and come check this shit out. I believe it, dude. And it's all CIA yeah. real shit. He's like, I'm still going to let you guys come check this shit out. And he was like, um, but I'm just going to pretend and say that you guys didn't. And so he did that, right? And then it, and he was like, fuck you guys, acting all hard. And then we declared war on him. And, that's and what, then they pulled the Dave Chappelle like, yeah, got you, bitch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, so I don't know if that's true, but I saw it on 60 Minutes, and that shit just blew my mind. And I was like, fuck, man. Like, and that's when I started feeling like I'm, I've been duped, bro. Yeah. Like, you know, it's kind of a shitty feeling now, you know, for yeah. sure. But at the same, like I said, like, I'm never going to say I regretted it. Yeah. I mean, I do this. I would have never met you guys. No, nah, exactly. And this is honestly like this is the only family I have and this is the only family I want. So fucking ain't right. That's it, you know, love you, dude. Love you, too, bro. Thanks for Thanks coming for, on, man. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, absolutely.